in this series, for this episode, I think it makes great sense to do a little bit of a strengthening training, a little bit of a workout, as I heard some knees cracking in my previous videos. So we were going to strengthen the muscles, to tone the muscles, to improve the muscles that hold the legs together, those bones, those many joints, to protect the joints by means of muscle strength, muscle activation. And for this purpose, I took some of the movement from my previous Feldenkrais inspired videos, somatic education, and turned them into little workout exercises. And I think that's going to be quite interesting and I want to present you my favorite ones, the ones I'm doing myself. So let's get right into it with the first exercise. Toe raises. So you can be standing or you can be sitting or lying down, any position really, and you raise your toes. So <laughs> that's what I love about fitness exercises. The name of the exercise is almost a complete description of the exercise. <laughs> But of course there can be details to it. You can be doing it, for example, with one foot or the other foot. Just keep your feet, your heels on the floor, the balls of the feet on the floor and just lift the toes. Find a way to lift the toes and if you sense, if you feel, if you put your mind to it, if you feel your foot, you will notice there's a difference in how you lift your toes when you're leaning more on the outside edge of your foot. So please do this. Choose one foot, for example, the right foot and lean more on the outside edge and lift all of your toes and then lean more on the inside edge and lift all of your toes and you will notice, oh, that's not the same, is it? And then let's do the same thing on the left side. Lift, continue lifting the toes of your left foot or start lifting the toes of your left foot and lean on the outside edge of the left foot and lift and lower your toes and then on the inside edge and lift and lower your toes to the floor. So it's almost like bumping the toes to the floor but there's no audible sound. The toes are probably not strong enough or not big enough to make any sound. So you could use your toes of your right foot to bump against the floor and the toes of your left foot to bump against the floor. And if you have enough time, you could try to lift the toes by themselves one by one, which might not work that well actually, even if you put your mind to it. So what could work is to lift only the big toe by itself or don't lift the big toe but lift the other four toes and maybe one foot works better than the other. So you can play a little bit with that and of course this exercise works best without shoes and this puts shoes in question in general. What does it mean to completely restrict the movements of the toes? to wear shoes that do not allow for this motion of the toes to lift and lower. But on to the next exercise, tibial toe raises, which mean now you actually lift off the forefoot. Let's try it with the right foot first. So you lift off the toes and the forefoot and you keep standing on the floor with your heel and then tap down the forefoot on the floor and maybe this time you're able to make quite an audible sound. And if not, you should be able to do it. So what do you need to change? How do you need to do it? How do you have to use your whole self, the rest of your body to support your foot to be able to make an audible clap against the floor? So this is already the basis of a musical piece as it seems like. So clap with your right foot, lift the right forefoot and then lift the left forefoot, right and left and right and left and right and left. And try to make that sound. I know it can be difficult to make an audible sound, but try to make that sound. So we have a rhythm. Now for a somatic, more somatic exploration. Stand again. Step, take a couple of steps on the place until you're standing again with your feet underneath your hip joints and then start tapping with your right forefoot again. But don't keep your right forefoot in place but move the forefoot a little bit to the left while you tap and then move the forefoot 
to the right or turn it to the right while you tap. So you're like flattening the earth. You tap from the right to the left. So you turn a little bit. So the pelvis is turning in which way? This is a good question. And if you look at your leg, you will notice that the knee is always in the same direction as your toes. This is an essential ingredient. Shouldn't be otherwise. Then move over to your left foot and start tapping with your left foot. And again, turn your left leg from your hip joint more to the left and more to the right. So you get a good tapping angle, like almost almost half a circle. Yes, okay, and then let's do it with both feet. So tap with both feet and bring the feet to the outside and both feet more to the inside. The forefoot pointing toward the inside or the forefeet pointing more towards the outside. So here we have the differentiation of the hip joints. So you can play with this for a while until you start to feel your shin bones. <laughs> That's why it's a workout. You can lean backwards a little bit or you can lean against the wall to make this movement even harder. But we're not looking for harder so much, do we? Is it a workout? Are we looking for harder? Let's talk about this a little bit later. And swiftly move on to the third exercise, which is heel raises. So you're lifting your heels instead of your toes. Well, that's kind of easy now after all these forefoot TBL toe raises. Come, come onto your toes, the balls of your toes, not the tips of your toes, of course, the balls of your feet, the balls of your toes come up to lift, lift up your, lift up your heels. Lift your heels and come to stand on the balls of your feet and then drop down again. But not too hard, it's more like a float down, like an uh, like eccentric movement. So you lift yourself up and then you let yourself down. And let's do this with the feet a little bit apart from each other or the feet close together, the heels touching and the big toes touching. So how often do we have to do this? Let's move on to the fourth exercise. For the fourth exercise, you will need something to hold on to. Here I use my couch, you could use a chair or even a wall, anything that gives you support and we're going to kneel down. So let's start with placing the right foot a little bit in front and you should or could lean with your right hand against your right knee and your left knee is a little bit behind you and the left hand on the chair or the couch to support you and then you kneel down a little and come back up. So that's a great exercise after a night's sleep. You wake up, your knees are a little bit stiff, the joints are filled with fluid, or you have been sitting for quite a while and you get up and you notice, oh, your knees are stiff, or you have been walking or running for quite a while and after a long walk you notice your knees stiffen up, this kind of thing. So that's a good exercise, a good remedy. So there's a couple of things to look at. First of all, both knees bend. The right foot is in front, the left foot is a little bit in the back and both knees bend forward as much as they move forward. Difference between the right foot and the left foot. The right foot stays flat on the floor and the left foot is allowed to bend in the toes, like the heel raises we just did. So you come down as far as it's comfortable. So this should not hurt in the knees. And when you feel like, ah, doesn't go any further here, you come back up again and use both legs to come back up and come back down when you kneel down. So don't just put all your weight into one basket, so to speak, onto one leg, but distribute your weight sensibly, smartly over 
both legs and see where do you have to put your weight more in front or more in the back when you go down and you lift the heel of your left leg and allow your left knee to drive towards the floor. Of course, here the flexibility of the toes can limit the movement. So that was the topic of a previous video in this series. So let's do this for like three or four times and then switch over to have the left foot in front of you and the right foot in the back and you again you distribute your weight smartly over both legs and then you start to kneel down so there's a bending in the hip joint bending in the knees bending in the ankles and the back foot now it's the right foot might may its heel may come off and the toes bend and you see how far can you go down and still be able to come up again especially if you haven't done this kind of movement in a long time only go to a place only go as far as you know you be able to come up again and if, if that's just like a little polite a little polite little bend then that's it but maybe the next time already you can go down a little bit further and then can come back up again switch legs as you like and see when you do this motion if you can bring the back leg the knee of the back leg closer and closer to the floor and if it doesn't work yet to come down all the way to touch your back knee to the floor so do the exercise a couple of times in the morning a couple of times in the evening always only as far as it's comfortable support yourself maybe on a table or a chair or your nephew <laughs> somebody support you until this movement so there's another video I have made called the lunge the lunge videos I have like a couple of videos like this of how to distribute your weight and how to shift the weight of your pelvis over one knee until you can arrive in this position so you notice your feet are not too far apart the feet are actually quite close together even though one foot is in front and one foot is in the back so that's assisted kneel downs and then we will do kneel downs without assistance that's the next exercise here this is a very similar movement like the previous one you put for example let's start with the left foot the left foot in front of the right foot but not too far apart they're quite close to each other and then you start to lower yourself down and come back up it's the same movement you lower yourself down you distribute your weight you drive your knees forwards while the left foot stays flat on the floor the heel of the right foot may lift off the toes bend until you arrive in a half kneeling position and from there you find how how can you go up what's the easiest way to come up again and you will notice when you drive your pelvis a little bit backwards and you push with your left foot which is the front foot backwards and then you push with your right foot whoop you're up again and then let's find the way down again so you move down you bend both knees you drive both knees forwards until you're on the floor and then you drive the knees backwards until you're up again now as i explained in my previous videos about the lunge there's also this walking motion with the shoulders so when the left foot comes forward actually the right shoulder comes forward so try to introduce this little twist when you go down so when your left foot is in front which means the left hip joint comes forwards the opposite shoulder the right shoulder comes forwards and up again it's actually quite an easy motion and the better your line the better you feel this motion the better your technique the, the, the easier the, the whole thing will be so then let's take a step forwards <laughs> and go down with both knees again but this time your right foot is in front and the left knee comes to the floor left knee to the floor which means your left shoulder drives forwards 
and backwards. And let's do this three times. And then take another step and go down with the left foot in front. So let's do this for three times, for example, and then turn around and take another step and then do another three times and then take a step and three times down and up and another step three times down and up and another step <laughs> three times down and up or only one time down and up and it's a little walk <laughs> now as a progression weighted kneel downs so the question is how can we make this movement more challenging how can we recruit more muscle power how do we challenge muscles to strengthen up and i recommend not to look for bad mechanics not to take a bad stance and then try to do the movement as uncomfortable and as badly aligned as possible just to challenge isolated muscles but acknowledge your biomechanics, acknowledge your nervous system, your smartness, acknowledge yourself, the desire to learn and to improve. So instead of finding a very difficult position to challenge muscles, we will just take a weight. Any weight, I don't have weights, but I have a water bottle. And then we do the same thing with weights. So of course, kettlebells would be great, or probably an iron bar would be great or your princess on your shoulders <laughs> or your brother in this regard so same movement with more weight make sure you're not introducing flaws because you're stressed because you feel oh this is heavy but really tune into yourself be with yourself feel sense and try to find the best mechanics, the way of least resistance. For the next exercise, we're going to move a little bit up on the legs to the glutes. And for this, we need to lie down on the back. So please come to lie down, join me on the floor on the back. And just take a moment to be on your back with your legs extended, your arms extended, and now squeeze both buttocks, both gluteal muscles, squeeze them. So when you squeeze them, isometric gluteal squeezes, the muscles become hard and your pelvis lifts up a little bit because the muscles tighten up and let go again. So you can do that a couple of times fast or a couple of times slow. And then once you're activated, once you have done, let's do 10, 10 of those. One, two, three, four, six, nine, ten. One last hard one. Okay. And then right buttock only. See if you can do that. Only the right buttock. And left buttock only. See if you can do that. And if both are not equally so first of all control is important you can do both of them on their own and secondly they need to be equally strong okay so that's warmed up then keep your right leg extended stand your left foot left foot close to your pelvis and squeeze your left buttock to extend your left hip joint and this time create this tension throughout the whole body. So you ex squeeze your left buttock, you drive your left knee away from you, which will lift you up like in a tetanus-like contraction. So you have a, a bridge with the pelvis slumping down to the right, but you can form a long arch, for example, a long, a long railway bridge with your right leg and a short one with your left leg. 
So let's do this for a couple of times. Squeeze your left buttock to bring up the left side of your pelvis, which make you lean more on the right shoulder. But you have like this bridge situation where your back muscles are involved and buttock muscles are involved and quadriceps and you're like in a bridge situation. And then come back down again. So that was the second time. Let's do it three times just to get this exercise right and you will notice your left foot might want to turn, might want to reposition itself to find a more advantageous situation. So you have these biomechanics, you have this brain and if you feel you need to reposition something to have a better alignment, to have a more ideal line of force, something to make this exercise easier, just follow that. Don't try to make it hard, but you have the exercise and try to bring it in a good alignment to your benefit. All right, then change over, left leg long, right foot standing, squeeze your right buttock, which will lift your right side of the pelvis and you form this bridge, this arch from your right foot up to your left shoulder, basically. Let's do this three times. So it's the buttocks, the glutes that squeeze, but of course also the hamstrings activate to a certain degree and you stand down on your right foot to arch and you can feel, if you feel your back muscles, everything is engaged. So three times. And then to conclude, take a short rest, a mini rest, and then stand both feet, squeeze both buttocks, and think of both knees driving down and away from you. So you come to lean on your shoulders and it's like a really a hard arch and if you like, you could come up even on your head, like a wrestler, the top of your head to form, to form this arch starting from your glute muscles. So that's our glute workout in supine. And then let's continue to kneeling. Next exercise. All right, so come up to kneel You're on your knees with the feet your instep flat on the floor, the toenails on the floor backwards. And again, let's contract one side of the glutes first, the left glutes, left buttock muscles, contract the left buttock muscles, which will drive the left side of your hip forwards, just like it was in lying supine, but now you're kneeling. So this will turn your shoulders to the right. Activate the left leg, the buttocks on the left leg turns the pelvis to the right, the shoulder to the right. You could even reach with your right hand for your right heel while you push, while your front side, the left front side opens because you contract the back side. Back side contracts, front side opens. You twist to the side to reach for your right heel. So three times. One, two, three. It's not, it's not that you turn your pelvis, but you squeeze your left buttock and this will create this movement. Then right buttock, squeeze your right buttock and the right buttock will drive the pelvis on your right side forward. Will make a diagonal connection from your right knee up to your left shoulder. Squeezing your right buttock will drive your left shoulder backwards a connection from your right knee up to your left shoulder. Here, squeezing the right buttock will drive your left shoulder backwards and you could reach for your left heel. Hmm? And the crowning ceremony, of course, to squeeze both buttocks and here think of the arch you did. You use your back muscles, you contract your belly muscles, don't let your abdominals hang out <laughs> weakly, but use a tension like a rock climber throughout the whole body to drive your pelvis forwards by squeezing both buttock muscles. And at this stage, you could as well stand your toes and reach backwards with both hands to have this wonderful position a skateboarder would assume or 
in skiing you could have this when you do ski jumping go backwards <laughs> and extend yourself fully what a wonderful position flying through the air all right so that was our glute part of this leg exercise let's continue so this is my favorite in this series of exercises I because I call it the roundhouse squat it's such a cool name so start by standing somehow shoulder width apart and look down at your feet and you will notice when you look at your feet there's no screws there's no nails there are no metal parts fastening your feet down to the floor but your feet you can lift them you can move them you can lift your toes your forefoot your heels everything is movable you're not a plant you're not a tree you're a human everything can move so Acknowledge that in this exercise if you want to find a better alignment if you feel like the exercise is easier with your feet a little bit in a duck feet position or with the feet a little bit forward follow that so to begin to begin this exercise you stand kind of shoulder width apart and bend your legs which means to bend the ankles bend your knees bend your hip joints follow with your neck and your everything and drive your knees forward which will make you squat down until until you can't anymore without bending your toes but keep your feet flat on the floor and when you reach that point start to push your knees backwards to move your buttocks backwards and come up again so you squat down with your knees forward until you can't anymore and then you bring your knees backwards your butt backwards so it's like a circle a circular movement so you start out going forwards don't fall down just like your shot but <laughs> fold everywhere fold down forwards move your pelvis backwards and go up again so circle round house <laughs> hmm we on a ship or we on again we are skiing again we're doing a skiing movement skiing motion okay we can reverse that <laughs> so start again by standing upright this time squat backwards bring your behind backwards as if your behind is looking for a chair to sit but of course there's no chair and once you realize there's no chair you squat down further you come to a proper Asian squat and from this position drive your knees further your pelvis further until you're up again again a circular motion same thing as before but the other direction so i don't know if there's a practical application for that other than maybe in a music video <laughs> wow so that's a good leg workout variation Let's start again, but instead of standing somewhere centered, bring your weight more onto your right leg and then start to squat down, for example, forward, where is forward, and then move your pelvis backwards and up again. So you're doing, so that's the skiing motion but with your weight on your right leg really challenges your right leg wow it really does doesn't it and then move your weight to your left leg and do the roundhouse squat over the left leg <laughs> ah. so in the next exercise the question is how to strengthen the hamstrings and for this i went on YouTube and on YouTube we have the world's best physical therapists, the world's best personal trainers and they present their best exercises to the best of their ability I mean how amazing is that we have the world at our fingertips so basically for the Nordic curl you need to find something to put your feet under something heavy 
a big sideboard, for example, your bed, for example, or for me, that's my couch, for example. So make sure there's no nails sticking out, safety first, and then let's see if you can put your feet under a couch. And I use a little blanket because I like it when my knees are protected and feel good and soft. And then, yes, this sofa is holding my weight, that's good. And then in front, take a chair or something in front of you. So we have this kneeling situation. But instead of driving the pelvis forwards, yes, the exercise we just did, we lean with the whole body forward. So you can lean against a chair. And what I noticed with almost everybody who does this Nordic curls, even the strongest, so we can look at the strongest athletes of this planet who are alive nowadays and we can watch them doing the same kind of exercises, watch them doing Nordic curls. And what I saw with them is that even the strongest, they stick their butt out a little bit. And I was thinking, hmm, what's up with that? So let's just incorporate that into the exercise. So instead of trying to lean forward like a smooth criminal, the magic of Michael Jackson, nobody knew how he did it. So instead of doing that, you lean forwards to start with and you bring your behind backwards and then you remove your support and try to drive your hip joints forwards. Oh, yes! So, which will give you the nice workout and keep the chair in front of you so you can lean forwards in case you fall forwards, in case your hamstrings don't hold. So it's a real challenge for the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. Again, you start with leaning forwards, bring your hip joints backwards, then remove your support from the chair and then try to drive your hip joints forwards and you will feel, you will actually feel how far can you lean forwards, but here we have a movement. So it's not just this very disadvantage ang angle. To be honest, the hamstrings are in the lower third of the setup. If we count the head to the knees as our full length, and then we should lean forwards with this door mechanism, it's really hard. But if we allow the hip joint to bend, we have a movement and we could even turn to one side and try not to reach for a heel, like reaching for a heel but can't quite catch it. Or on the other side to challenge the hamstrings and have this little hip hinge movement going on to really get a good burning and be subject to a late onset muscle soreness and unable to walk tomorrow. Another variation I want to show you in terms of progressions of the Nordic curl. So I call this the bow down Nordic curl. It's, it's like you would bow down to a master in front of you, but instead of using really good mechanics, you again put your heels underneath something that is able to hold your weight and you try to move your head forwards towards your master when you bow down and we will start in a bow down position. But try to move your head as close to your object of worship as you can while still being able to come back up into a full kneeling position. So that's it. It's a bow down, but you try to distance your head from your feet as much as possible. So that's the challenge. The closer you want to get to the master, the more difficult. <laughs> and another challenge I came up with for the hamstrings to have a more explosive movement is you need a pillow and you hold the pillow behind yourself with both hands at the height of the back of your knees. And then you bend your knee to drive your for example, your right foot towards your right buttock, but the pillow is stopping the movement, slowing down the movement. So you try to explosively hit your foot against your right butt cheek, but the pillow is stopping it. 
another workout that fits well into the series I have found is a workout for the shoulders. It's like regular push-ups, but instead of pushing up against the floor, you mm -hmm. take two chairs mm -hmm. or here two sofas where you can really hang yourself <laughs> on, your, on your arms. So you can hang your spine in between your shoulder blades. So you're like really low. It's like you're like a tiger trying to drink water in a little well. So that's something we did probably too when we were monkeys a million years ago, if that's true. So we needed this range of motion to bow down and then come up as a push-up and then let yourself down again. And you can assist yourself with your legs. So to do only 25% of the work with your shoulders or you could place your feet behind you. Let's do this, long legs and go down and come up. Of course, if you have kettlebell or big books at home, you could use those. And the last exercise for this movement routine, I think it wraps it up nicely, is a little jumping exercise, but not just hopping, but jumping, like a meaningful jump. We try to reach something. We really try to reach for something. So you have something you want to grab, or you want a towel to hang somewhere, or you want to jump for, I don't know, an apple. So you have to go down a little bit in your knees and then quite explosively jump up to reach to your ability. So if you haven't done this for quite a while and it's very challenging, then you might have a little hop. You start with a little hopping. Or so right hand, left hand. Don't overdo it, just a little bit to round off this exercise. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this movement sequence as much as I enjoyed creating it. I'm using it, I've been using it the last two weeks. I will continue to use these movements also in order to be able to progress in this series, which will of course have its own challenges. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.